Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Back out here in the woods with our Osage stave we've been working on. Now we've got a little bit of a problem with this stave. It kind of popped up last night that we're going to have to work through today. Now bear in mind this stave is probably, I'm guessing, somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 inches long. And it doesn't have to be that long and that's a good thing for us right now. Because what we've got is we've got a problem. I'm going to show you this limb. I don't know if you can see this very well, excuse me, wrong limb. You should be able to see how that limb's got a downturn in it. You see how that limb is twisted off this way? We gotta get rid of that. We can't have that on there. So we're gonna have to cut that limb off back into here, which means we're gonna lose a good three inches, four inches on this side of the bow, and we've gotta cut the same amount off this side of the bow. So we're gonna end up with about a 60 inch bow, which is really pushing the envelope, but because we've got an Osage stave, We'll be able to get away with that. We'll have a nice, shorter hunting bow that's real stealthy in the woods after that. So that's okay. That's not breaking my heart any. So that's what we're going to work on this morning. The first thing we're going to do is get these cut off even, get some new knock points cut into them, and then we're going to start taking more material off the belly of this bow because now it's going to be even more material we're going to have to take off to get these limbs to bend properly because it's going to be a shorter bow. So we got some work to do. Um, we have decided up and down on this bow. This will be up and it just it's more comfortable that way and there's already a little bit of an indention right here because of the way the wood bends okay now I've cut these two pieces off of our limb on both ends here and here I went back to work with the axe a little bit I was a little off my center line on this side that I had drawn on my bow so I'm gonna kind of try to get back closer to that center line with this limb and I'll take it back over and use a rasp on it. I've also done a little bit of thinning on this limb with the axe because I know now I'm going to have to get a lot thinner with these limbs because of the size they are now, shorter. It's going to take a lot less meat for these things to bend, a lot less material on the limbs to get bend out of them. So, and we'll still have a really, really, really strong bow, I can tell you that. But we're going to have to take a lot more meat off of it to get it to bend properly now because the limbs are shorter. So I'm taking some meat off with the axe, then I'm going to go back and dress it up with the rasp here in a few minutes. I want to show you guys something real quick on these uh, string grooves on your bow because we got to cut new ones today, so we had to cut this bow off. We've got this bow pretty solid in this vise. And I'm just going to use a rat tail file from what we've got from our common man kit. And go at a 45 degree angle, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch down from the top. And just start it slow. Like I said, I like my string grooves at about a 45 degree angle. And you want to cut that down into the wood to give it a place to grab. But you're not really trying to finish it right now. All you're trying to do is get it a good, good place for your string to hold while you're doing your tillering. And it takes a few minutes to do this, but you want to finish them up a lot nicer later anyway. But right now you're just trying to give your place, give your string a place to grab while you're doing your initial tillering. Then I'll come over on the other side and do exactly the same thing at exactly the same angle. I'll start it slow, look at it to make sure I've got it even with the other one, make sure I've got the same angle, the same amount of space from the tip of the bow. Like I said, I'll shape those later into something more desirable on the tip. But for right now, all I'm trying to do is get it where I want it. i got to jam it in this vise the right way so I get a good hold on it because I really don't want it moving too much while I'm doing this. I'm 
looking at it all the time just to make sure they're the same. Once I'm pretty convinced that they're pretty close to the same, then I can go after it a little bit more. But all I really need is a groove in there for that string to hold on to. And I'll do this in both ends. Then we're pretty close to getting this thing to, on the tillering tree. Okay, you can see what that string groove looks like when it's done. Like I said, it's nothing fancy, just something to hold my string. I just want to make sure that it's deep enough for the string to set down in it. And I'll finish that nicer later when I'm finishing the bow. But for right now, that'll do just fine. Now while I'm working on this groove and I got it down in the vise, like I said, I'm not really trying to finish anything right now. I'm going to take my Pathfinder knife and just kind of bullnose this a little bit all the way around. Just so I don't have an edge up there when I'm trying to string and unstring this bow. And I'll just do that on both sides with my Pathfinder knife. This thing's plenty sharp. I don't have to worry about having to jerk it and cut myself. I'm just trying to round this edge off a little bit and not get too excited about it. Just like that for the moment. And I want to show you where we're at over here on this mat. These limbs right now. You can see I'm starting to get some good bend in them now. Not too bad. Might need to take a little bit more off that tip right there but that reflex area has been in really good and this other side got a little reflex right there might need to have a little bit off the back of that too but she's been in a lot better now get back over on this rasp for a few minutes see what we can do about those two spots all right guys let's <clears throat> take a look at this bad boy if we can I'll show you the best I got. This thing's nowhere near close yet. I cannot get that to full draw, even with a slack string. And you can see how thin those limbs are already on that Osage. It's tillering out perfect, but the wood is just so hard, the limbs have to be thinner. So we're going to have to take more material off. Okay, now, because these limbs are getting so thin now, all I'm doing now is doing fishbone shavings at about a 45 degree angle, depending on how I got to hit this bow in here, but basically at a 45 degree angle, just right up the bow, just like this. I don't have it jammed in the right tree for this camera angle, but here we go. And I'm taking the same amount off, basically, off of both my limbs. And like I said, just at a 45, I'm just going up this direction, just like this. So I'm going up on the bow from both sides, rounding it over to get that eye shape we talked about. Because now my tiller is pretty good. And I haven't even put this on a tillering tree yet. I've got a feeling that I'm not going to be able to use the tillering tree we used the other day because it's made out of nails. And this bow's too strong, it's going to pull the bend those nails right over. <clears throat> this bow right now is probably sitting at about 95 or 100 pounds. I want to get it down to 60, 65. But I'm trying to take even amounts of material off throughout the limb now because my tiller looked pretty good. And I'm kind of cupping it on the one side with my hand just like this and just rolling it over. Just like this. All the way up and down the limb. Being careful not to take any more material off of one area than another, all the way up to the fade. And I'm doing that on both sides, and then I'm going to turn the bow around and do the other side. Yeah, we're really looking good now. Yeah. 
And now at this point in the game, it's critical any material we take off of this. I've got a really nice floor tiller over here, and I'm not going to be able to put this on a tree because it's going to bend those nails. So I'm going to have to tiller this by hand and by eye. And you'll be able to do that when you get used to this stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a paracord tillering string on here and try to get a couple inches of brace height and exercise this bow a little bit and kind of look at the tiller as I go. Now to put this paracord tillering string on here and try to get a little bit of brace height, I'm going to use a step through method on this and just put my ankle down on the bow and put the handle of the bow right in the crotch of my knee, basically. And I'm going to pull the upper limb toward me. When I put the cord in it, I'm going to wrap it over one time just like this so that I can use that to draw it tight. And I'm going to try to get myself a little bit of brace height here. And see, I'll relax a little bit. And I'll pull a little more into it until I get what I want. We got one strong bow here, boys, I can tell you that. Let it relax for a minute, because that paracord's gonna stretch. Relax it again, pull a little tighter. Hold it for a minute. You can see it's pinching my leg pretty good right here, so not where we need it to be yet. And I just let it slip a little bit there. And this is just stretching the limbs a little bit and stretching my tillering string at the same time as I go through this exercise. And I'm just kind of letting it sit, stretch out a bit as I go. And this may take me two or three minutes to get this strung up to a brace height of three or four inches. trying to get it to where it's not pinching my leg anymore. When I get it to that point, then I'll be pretty happy with that much brace I can start off with. You just got to take your time be patient with it. Let the string stretch. Let the bow give. Still pretty tight on my leg, not pinching it near as bad. Still a little tight. I'll reposition myself on the bow and hold on to it while I let go. Pull it a little bit tighter. Okay. That's not bad. Now, let's just tie this up a couple of times in a self releasing type knot here. Okay, our string stretched out again. Back to zero brace height. But I want to start exercising these limbs a little bit. So I'm just going to draw up and down on it and exercise those limbs and get them broke in a little bit at a time. This is a slow process, not something that you're going to do in four hours like or two hours like a bush bow or a survival bow. This is a 40, 50 hour project. When you're looking at your tiller while you're doing this. What I'm seeing is I got more bend here than I've got here. Which tells me that this limb needs a little more taken out of it. And that's fine. And when I'm done doing this, I'll take some more off of it. And I'll probably do this 25 or 30 times. Okay, guys, at this point now, I know my tiller's good, but my poundage is too high, obviously. So now I'm not going to mess with the bow vise anymore. Now I'm just taking small amounts of material 
off the sides of these limbs a little at a time. I'm checking my limb tiller all the time as I do that. And seeing how much bend I get and making sure I'm getting even amount of bend throughout the limb. Okay guys, I got about, I don't know, four inches of brace height here. And I just kind of want to show you where we're at. Been out here about four hours at this. There's our profile of our bow strung. Pretty even tiller. Maybe a little bit more bend here than here. Now what I want to show you is, I want to show you that this is, even at this four inch brace height, this, I'm telling you, this is freaking 80 pounds of draw probably. I cannot hardly get this thing back to my lip and keep my arm straight. We're talking, I mean, you can see my arm shaking. This is, this is some huge draw weight on this bow still. But now that I've got it strung, I can take my rasp on the inside of that string and shave some of that out, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So this is going to be part four of the Osage bow. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying making this bow with you. Um, tomorrow we'll shape our handle a little bit more. We'll shape our knocks a little bit more. and We'll try to get this thing strung to a brace height with a real bow string instead of just a tillering string like a piece of paracord. But get back a little bit here. Maybe you can see the bow just a little bit better as far as the tiller goes. It's not bad. And it is heavy. And I mean it is heavy. I couldn't shoot that more than a few times without wearing my shoulder out. That thing's got to be 80, 90 pounds. 80 pounds anyway, for sure. Because I shoot 60, 65 a lot. And this bow's a lot heavier than that. So, with that said, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. Thank you for joining me for another video. And I'll be back tomorrow. We'll try to get this bow a little bit more of a finished state.